everyone. Today we're working on block two of the 2023 Scrappy Sampler. Let's make it together. For this block, you'll need the foundation paper piecing template from my blog. It goes on to two pages because it is bigger than one page. So let me show you what I do to assemble it. I've printed both template one and template two. You can see here that there is a line, a black line going down the paper on both sides. What you want to do on the first paper is cut right at the black line. Be as accurate as possible because this will affect the size and the shape of your block. Cut right on this black line. Once you have it cut off, what you're going to do is take the second page and you're going to match up the first page right to the black line on the second page and it will make the, a perfect block. I use tape here, but you can use the glue or anything that you'd like to hold this into place. I usually just do one piece straight across. And I don't have any problems with this uh, ruining my needle, but I change my needle really frequently, so it never has a chance to um, build up or have anything wrong with it. So now I have tape going down this, and my block is exactly as it should be. I just cut the excess off just so that it's easier to work with. And then we're going to start adding pieces. In case you haven't done foundation paper piecing before, let me just give you uh, a little explanation of it. The first step in foundation paper piecing is to look at your paper. You're actually gonna be sewing your block right to this paper. Everywhere there is a dark black line, that's where your stitch lines are going to be. The piece you can see is numbered with numbers in at each uh, little log. And what it is, is you're going to follow them in order. So this is A1, my middle is A2, and A3. Then you're gonna follow the numbers to add A4, a5, A6, A7, and you're just going to keep going in numerical order and adding pieces. When you're sewing this, you're actually sewing it to the other side of the paper with your good fabric facing up. It's a little bit tricky to get a hang of it if this is your first time, but don't give up. This is a really rewarding, fun style of sewing, and once you conquer it, you can do so many fun things that you can't do with traditional patchwork. Let's start adding the pieces. Very often, foundation paper piecing patterns don't give you directions on cutting out your fabric. And the reason is because the person who, whatever pattern you're looking at, they're letting you decide how much fabric you want to have around. So for this pattern, this is a beginner one. We're using squares and rectangles. It's very straightforward on how you're gonna be moving the pieces of fabric. When you're getting to more difficult pieces with lots of triangles and different shapes, um, you need to be comfortable with um, deciding how much fabric you want to have extra around it as giving you a buffer for when you flip it. Now, this will make more sense when you see me, but I just want to give you this explanation first. So if you want to know exactly how much fabric to cut out or just a roundabout, you use your ruler and the minimum that you can have, say I'm working on this centerpiece, A2, the minimum that you can have is a quarter inch passed on every side. So that would be like three and a quarter for this center square. That's the minimum. But oftentimes when you're working with foundation paper piecing patterns, you want to give yourself just a little bit more room, especially if they're more difficult. Now this one's not, not as difficult, again, because I said it's just squares and rectangles, but um, oftentimes you want to do a half of an inch of a buffer space. So in that case, you'd want to cut a three and a half inch square for this center one. So then you just like continue doing this for all these other logs, deciding if you want to have a quarter of an inch of buffer room and seam allowance or a half of an inch with a little bit of extra buffer room and your seam allowance. So if I'm measuring a one here, I'm going to line up the top and the right side with my quarter inch, if that's what I decide, if I decide to do a quarter of an inch, and I'm gonna see about that what comes out to. So that would be like one and a quarter by three and a quarter if you were doing a quarter of an inch extra. If you're doing an inch, uh, a half of an inch extra, that would be more like three and a half by one and a half for each of these logs. 
And now I'll show you how to start piecing it. So I decided to give myself a half of an inch of buffer room on each side of the pieces of this block. And now I'll show you how I put it together. So I have everything cut out. My first piece is this square. And oftentimes, um, I, if you're a beginner, I would recommend uh, using just some glue on your first piece just to hold it in place. Because the first two pieces that you sew on here, they're not gonna have any stitches holding them down, so they might slip. So if you want to just um, put a little bit of like a glue stick on here, washable uh, kids glue stick, and just stick this first piece down, that will help so that this doesn't shift before you get your stitches into place. And then what, so like I said, the stitch lines are here. This is the side that we're gonna be looking at when we're sewing. But we're laying our fabric this way with the prints up. So what I do is, and Another way that can help you get this first piece centered is going by a sunny window and just, or using a light box and just holding it up to the light. You'll see the square behind it and you'll be able to adjust uh, exactly where you want this piece. I'm just gonna let it be whatever it is. And we're doing A1 and A to A2. So what I do here, A2 was the square and A1 was one of the logs on the side. As I fold it back, so I am in line with the line we're going to stitch on. And then I know if I, cause I need to have about a quarter of an inch seam allowance that I need to go about a quarter of an inch past that line. And what I'm gonna do is hold this in place and flip it over. I'm still holding it in place with my fingers here. And when you're sewing foundation paper piecing blocks, you turn your stitch length shorter so i'm using about a 1.5 to a 1.8 and what we're going to do is stitch on the line between a1 and a2 i like to back stitch at the beginning and end of these but a lot of people don't so you just try it either way and see what works for you okay so you'll see here that i've sewn on this line between a1 and a2 and if you look at it on this side, I have a little bit extra here, which I'm going to trim away. This is the equivalent of like making a half square triangle and trimming it. This is just part of foundation paper piecing. And the better you get at it, the less you'll have here. Like you'll be able to do it with smaller pieces that might not even be able, that might not even need to be trimmed. You might be able to do an accurate quarter of an inch at every seam and then you don't have to trim. So I trim that. I just like bent the paper out of the way and I just trimmed along it. And now I'm going to just finger press this open so you can see. Now what I need this piece to do is I need it to go beyond this line right here and beyond these two lines because I need to have my seam allowance built in there. And it does, so we're good to go. Our next piece, which would be A3, is this other log. So we're going to repeat the process on this side. I'm going to find the seam, and I like to crease it just so I could see where the seam is so I can visualize on this side because I'm not looking at the grid. And then I go about a quarter of an inch past that, flip it over, and I sew on the line between A2 and A3. So you can see here, and these little threads, like you can just, they're fine, or you can trim them. They will probably end up getting in your way if you don't trim every single one, but you can leave them if you want. Okay, then when we flip it over, we're looking at the same thing as the last step. I'm going to fold the paper back and trim this to be about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And once I have that trimmed, I'll just take a finger press and just make sure I'm passing uh, let me hold it up so you can see with the light. I want to make sure that I'm passing this line and this bottom line and this top line, which I do. You can see that I go past those a quarter of an inch on each side. So this is perfectly oriented. The next step will be to do A4 and then A5, which you can see on my pattern here. The dark is the color and the white is the background. So I just did three color pieces, and now I'm going to work on A4 and A5, and those are background. Now, if you wanted, you could use a little glue to help you tack this. 
into place. I'll do that so you can see. I just use these washable kids glue sticks. If you are doing it, you want to make sure that you're just gluing in the portion, um, like not the seam allowance, only in like the little block area. So I'm just going to put a little line right where my fabric will go and then just press it open and um, go ahead. And then I'm gonna repeat that over here just to help. And as you get better at foundation paper piecing, I would say you won't need the glue as much, but in the beginning, it definitely helps. Like it's like an extra hand holding these down in place so that you don't have to worry. So A4 is on this side. I'm going to fold this back so that I see the line between um, the center and A4. And I'm going to get my next piece, which I think I still need to trim a little bit. I cut um, one and a half inch strips, so I still need to trim this a little bit. I'm just going to cut that off. And I'll take this piece and I'll put it about a quarter of an inch past my fold, flip it over, and sew on the line here between A2 and A4. So now we'll do the same, this whole block is just gonna be repeating the same process. Because we're making these courthouse steps, everything is very like even and repetitive. So we're going to trim away the excess fabric, which is like nothing here. And then we will fold this back. And now you can see we're beginning to form the courthouse steps. So the next part is this bottom one, which is A5. I'm going to fold this just like we just did to mark where the seam is. And I'm going to get my other strip and put it about a quarter of an inch past that fold. And I'm going to sew along the line between A2 and A5. Fold the paper back and trim away. Okay. And now you can see we have added our two background portions to this. Now, if you'd like, just like we did before, you can add a little bit of glue here to help hold these in uh, the spot. The other thing you can do too is you can press after each step if you like. You'll still maybe need the glue in the beginning to just help your hands, uh, but if you press this in between each step, it could it would help it stay fully uh, open and not close on you when you flip over the paper. Let me get a little glue for this side just to show you. And we're going to keep for this block going back and forth between colored portions and white portions until our whole block is made. So the next step is going to be add two color portions. So they're right here, A6 and A7, and I'll work on that now. And you don't have to, when you're working on these two open sides, like this this one that I just sewn is not going to touch this one that I'm adding now. So I'm not trimming. You don't need to trim or press in between these two because they're not touching. If you are pressing, you, you'll trim between the colored portions and the white portions because those are actually going to be touching each other in this block. So your colored portions need to be laying correctly when you're on your white portion and vice versa. But now that I added both of those, I'm gonna come in here and trim this to a quarter of an inch and repeat that on this other side here. And then with these open, you will now add your next background piece.
I just sewed the last piece on here and I'm ready to trim and then press and show you the final steps for this block. After you have your last two put on, the next step is going to be to press this. So let's go over to the iron and press. After you've finished your last two ones, you're going to come over, set the seams, and press them so that they're laying nice and flat. And repeat that on the other side. So now your block looks like this and we need to trim, trim the block. You're going to take it and flip it over and let me just show you here. This dark line on the edge is where your block will be when it's sewn into your quilt. This dotted line on the outside is where you need to trim it now. That's your seam allowance in between those. So you have a quarter inch seam allowance around your whole block and what you have to do is trim on the dotted line to make it nice and even. To do this, I usually use a ruler that's bigger than the block. So this is an eight and a half inch block. So I have a 12 and a half inch square ruler here. And I like this ruler, this is a Creative Grids. I like this ruler because it has this dotted line on the one side of it. Actually, it's on two sides. It's on a top and a right. I lay the dotted line of the ruler along the solid line, and now the dotted line on the paper is lined up with the very edge of my ruler. So I'm going to trim this off, and I'm gonna repeat that on every edge of the block. And now the block is trimmed to the exact size that you need it to be. The final step here is removing the papers. To remove these papers, I work from the outside in. So the first one I'm going to take off is the one that is the whole length of the block. You're going to have one of these on each side. I fold it on the line that we sewed and I'm just going to rip it just as if it was like perforated paper. It'll mostly come off easy. Sometimes you'll have these little stragglers you'll have to go in. If you have a really hard spot, and again, this is a simple block, but if you have a really hard spot, tweezers work good for getting the paper out. After I have the outer two ripped off, I'm going to move to the next longest one, which is A15 and A14. I'm going to repeat the process. And I will keep working my way to the center of this block. This full one is taped, so if it's a little bit trickier, that's why. There we go, almost no big, no big deal. And our last piece then, we should just be able to like lift right out. Make sure there's nothing stuck that you wanna take, any like long threads you can trim away. These little bits, if you see a little bit stuck in your seam allowance, like right here, you could get tweezers if you wanted to get those out, but they come out pretty easy with like just some moving of your fingers. So that's the back of the block. And here is the front of the block. It looks really good. So I hope I cleared up the you know, mystery of foundation paper piecing if you've never done that method before. And um, if you practice it, you'll see that this is a really fun skill to have in your quilting belt. That wraps it up for today and block two. I hope you had fun making this block and I'll be back again tomorrow with block three.